Good evening, Brazil Michael, and you're watching Kini News, the show that brings you today's bigger stories. Content creators love Telegram because it doesn't compress the photos you send, but for over 30,000 people in a group called V2K, they've been using it for something far more sinister. You have probably heard of it by now, the horror story that is the V2K Telegram group, home to over 30,000 people who use it to share pictures and videos of Malaysian women without their consent. And to make things worse, some of the content is pornographic in nature. They've been at it under the radar for some time now, but this week, they got exposed and Bukit Aman's Sexual Women and Child Investigations Division, known as D11, is swooping in. And they're not going in alone. D11 will be assisted by the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission. The now infamous group was first highlighted on social media after Twitter user Nor Sakina found out last Sunday that her beach holiday photos from Instagram were being shared in a group after being tipped off by a friend of a friend who was supposedly in the group to monitor things. She said after she highlighted the group's existence, members of the V2K group caught wind of it and began to post aggressive messages aimed at her in the group. But she wasn't alone. As news of the group's discovery went viral on social media, especially Twitter and Instagram, a public backlash against V2K ensued. And more groups of that nature were then exposed. Like, I posted about that in my Instagram because I feel like, I don't know, I just felt like people should know about this and I don't want to diam diam about it. And then after that, I told other girls, like, if you have any of your stories or any more information, tell me. And then, like, a lot of girls start, like, DMing me about their own experience, whether it's the nudes I exposed or just regular pictures. And then... Yeah, I just compiled all of that and also like there was more information circulating like generally online because another girl also like kind of spoke up about it. But according to Sakina, it was not just photos of adult women. Some of the groups exposed were even more sinister. Yeah, there's all kind of content. They have like a, like a folder, like a paid folder like of uh, allegedly you know, like child pornography and also some of the girls' pictures that they post actually they are underage oh. like when I'm 17 or what mm. so yeah but for like the child pornography it's like if you DM the admin then you like pay for it and they will send it to you However, for many of the girls who have had their private pictures stolen or shared without their consent whether to file a police report is a difficult decision to make yeah, because I guess a lot of girls, like, don't know what to report, don't know how to report. And also, a lot of them are scared that the police, like, blame them, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, why you post sexy pictures. But I also, like, because I'm Malay, right, but then like, I pakai bikini and panah, like, pergi dan police marah or what. So it's kind of bad situation as well. So a lot of people malu. Speaking to Kini TV, renowned human rights activist Ivy Josiah said the existence of such groups show the need for specific sexual harassment laws. Harming women when these women have not consented to this, when you're using their photographs, when you're going into their private spaces, fishing out, stealing their photographs and circulating it, that for me is definitely a crime. But more than anything else, it really goes to show that today in 2020, that women are still viewed as sex objects, that we are so disrespected. And that is why we need to make sure that there are very specific laws. And I'm certainly with the women's groups lobbying for sexual harassment, um, you know, a law. Ivy said, despite the perpetrators committing crimes by sharing such content, society continues to blame women in these situations. Why does it happen to women? Because we do not respect women. And as I said, I really want to emphasize all those trolls out there who are scolding these women to say, why did you in the first place put photographs of yourself in your, in your, in your Instagrams or in private messages? Why did you share a new picture with your boyfriend? You, know, you, you have a right to share whatever you want to share with your partner, with your boyfriend, with your husband. But it's more about these men who have taken those photographs and, you know, and basically they call it revenge porn, right? Yeah. You need to focus on, 
on the men, on the perpetrators and get them to change the attitudes. In fact, we need to punish these perpetrators, not blame women. Jean Manisha, who heads Challenger Malaysia, a prominent youth movement in the country, echoed Ivy's statement that the habit of blaming women in such cases must end. Men don't overthink when they post shirtless pictures, right? Yeah. So a lot of the comments coming from men in the group, they are saying like, oh, um, it is the fault of the woman for posting half-naked pictures. In whatever bad grammar that they're saying it, that's what they're saying. Um, they are basically blaming us for being ourselves, for being human, um, for being creative, for being for existing. Um, and I think this is an important issue right now, especially because um, we, for too long, men have been doing this in secret. Um, and it's only now that something like this has actually become public and there's also public backlash. Though Jean welcomes the backlash against the perpetrators, she says a more long-term and complete solution would be needed. So perhaps in five years, women won't have to fear the next way they'll be preyed on. If you thought the 260 cases reported yesterday was high, wait till you see today's figures. Malaysia has reported a record high number of daily new COVID-19 cases today, with 287 new infections. This comes after the country reported 260 new cases yesterday. However, unlike the previous day, Sabah wasn't the state with the highest number of new daily infections. Today, that went to Kedah with 129 cases, while Sabah reported 113 cases, followed by Selangor with 31. Health Director General Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah said there were also new cases recorded in Perak, Terengganu, Kelantan, Negeri Sembilan, Labuan, Johor, Kuala Lumpur and Pahang. He said 20 of these cases involved individuals who recently travelled to Sabah. Well, if you look into this virus, the virus uh, knows no border and uh, whoever you are, whether you are a president, whether you are a politician or whether you are a lay person. So more importantly, each and every one of us uh, uh, must comply to the SOP. So compliance is very important. So this is a social responsibility, social discipline among us, as well as social compliance to the SOP. A professional who fought for justice for Sabah and Malaysia and a good man. That's how many are remembering VK Liu who passed away today. Former de facto law minister and Warisan permanent chairperson Liu Viu Kiong passed away this morning at a hospital in Kota Kinabalu. Liu had been warded since early this week for a lung infection and was reportedly in a coma. He had earlier sought treatment for a slip disc. He leaves behind his wife and four children. Prior to joining Warisan in 2018, Liu had been a long-time member of BN Component Party, Liberal Democratic Party, LDP, and was its president from 2006 to 2014. On Twitter, politicians from both sides of the political divide came together to offer condolences to Liu's loved ones. Former colleague in the previous Pakatan Harapan cabinet, Lim Guan Eng, said Liu was not only a friend but a fellow fighter for truth and justice for Sabah and Malaysia. Science, Technology and Innovation Minister Kari Jamaluddin recalled how Liu was professional and courteous in Parliament and a strong fighter for his home state Sabah. PKR Communications Director Fahmi Fahdel said the last time he had met Liu was before the vote on a supply bill for new ministries on August 17th. His former aide Samantha Chong wrote about how a former boss fought hard for the abolishment of the death penalty despite all the fierce criticism he faced. Former Sabah Chief Minister Musa Aman also offered his condolences. Meanwhile, AMNO Supreme Council member Aziz Rahim wrote that Liu was a good man and was always professional in carrying out his duties as an MP and a former minister. With escalating political tensions and the COVID-19 pandemic worsening, AMNO Youth has urged Anwar Ibrahim to postpone plans to take over Putrajaya. AMNO Youth Chief Ashraf Wajdi Duski has urged PKR President Anwar Ibrahim to postpone plans to take over Putrajaya. In a Facebook post today, he said he hoped that the future Prime Minister and Pakatan Harapan would postpone their desire to mobilise an agenda to change the government and the Prime Minister, which can lead to Parliament being dissolved and the 15th general election being called. He said they should learn from Sabah, where a tussle to become Chief Minister led to snap state elections. Ashraf added that they should prioritise the public safety as there is currently a risk for a third wave of COVID-19 infections.
There have been numerous COVID-19 infections recorded nationwide linked to people returning from Sabah, including politicians who had campaigned for the state polls. Coming up next, one of the most powerful people on earth has tested positive for COVID-19. The coronavirus has made its way to US President Donald Trump. US President Donald Trump said on Friday that he and First Lady Melania Trump had tested positive for COVID-19. He announced this in a post on Twitter and said that they would immediately quarantine and begin the recovery process. Trump, who is tested regularly for the virus, has kept up a rigorous travel schedule across the country in recent weeks, holding rallies with thousands of people in the run-up to the November 3rd election. This is despite warnings from public health professionals against having events with large crowds. The results came after news that Hope Hicks, a top advisor and trusted aide, had tested positive on Thursday. Hicks travelled regularly with the US President on Air Force One and, along with other senior aides, accompanied him to Ohio for the presidential debate on Tuesday and to Minnesota for a campaign event on Wednesday. The US President has come under sharp criticism for his response to the coronavirus pandemic that has killed more than 200,000 people in the US alone. Earlier on Thursday night, he had predicted that the end of the pandemic was in sight. Madrid is set to become the first European capital to go back into lockdown. Europe's second wave of COVID-19 is now forcing one of its worst-hit countries, Spain, to put its capital back into lockdown. Madrid is the continent's most severe coronavirus hotspot. According to the World Health Organization, Madrid has 859 cases per 100,000 people. The city of over 3 million people is set to go into lockdown in the coming days after the region's leader reluctantly agreed Thursday to obey a central government order to ban non-essential travel there. Although Madrid will go back into lockdown, it won't be as harsh as during the pandemic's first wave when people were confined to their homes for more than six weeks from mid-March. Much of Europe is also facing similar challenges. Countries across Europe have introduced new restrictions in their busiest cities over the past days, including limiting how many people can be in a restaurant or making face masks compulsory in more places to counter an increase in cases. Local lockdowns across the UK has also been put in place. England has seen a 61% increase in positive cases in its latest weekly data nearly four more times the number of cases recorded compared with the end of August. Prime Minister Boris Johnson urged Britons to follow the new tighter rules. In Italy, also one of the worst-hit countries, Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte plans to ask Parliament to extend the country's COVID-19 state of emergency to the end of January. And France's new coronavirus cases increased by more than 10,000 for the first time in three days on Wednesday while the number of people hospitalized with the disease rose by almost 100 to a 10-week high. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. I'll be back with more next week, same time, same place. I'm Bruce Michael. Thank you for watching.